Okay, in this video I'm going to provide a short demonstration of simple mediation in R using the MBESS package and information on this package can be found at this site right here. So just so you know, you can actually download uh, this file that I have open. It's a notepad uh, containing uh, information regarding uh, you know, this site right here uh, and then the syntax that I'm using in my analyses. Uh, also, a copy of the data can be downloaded from this uh, site right here. So the data is in CSV format. I've already downloaded it, and um, so it's in my downloads folder. So what I'm going to do to start off things is I'm just going to actually read the data uh, into a uh, data frame object, uh, which is going to be called mediate.data. So that's the data frame, and um, and then we'll carry out our um, analysis and. So what I'll do is I'm going to move this over here and just go ahead and read in. Like I said, um, the, the data is actually already contained in my downloads folder. So you do have to make sure that uh, wherever your data is, you'll need to make sure that uh, you have the directory set for um, the folder that contains your data. So uh, we're all set here. And so now if we just want to take a quick look at the data, we can type in strmediate.data and that's the structure of the data. And so the variables that we're going to be using in this analysis are subject matter interest, mastery goals, and uh, achieve. So the independent variable in our model is going to be mastery goals, the mediating variable is going to be subject matter interest, and then the dependent variable is going to be achieve. So um, keep in mind that you'll need to install the package first before you can uh, run uh, anything from it. So um, this is just the uh, uh, the uh, command for installing the package MBESS. You'll notice this in quotation marks. And then we actually have to call it up using the library function. So I've already installed the package, so I'm just going to type in library and then uh, inside uh, parenthesis MBESS and in parenthesis and there you go. So next up uh, what I thought I would do is first uh, run a couple of regression models. So the first model, you'll note, notice that I have uh, LM. That's uh, for the uh, basically to carry out a linear model. So I'm creating a, a fit object called fit1. And you'll notice that I've got uh, subject matter interest, tilde, and then mastery goals right here. <clears throat> so this is just a simple regression, regressing our mediator variable onto uh, the independent variable here then comma data equals mediate dot data. So here we are referencing our data object which is uh, what we've created right here. The second model I'm just calling fit2 or the uh, second fit object is called fit2. We're running this uh, we're running uh, again a linear regression. In this case we have achievement as our dependent variable tilde and it is a function of both subject matter interest and mastery goals. Um, and then again, we have our data object being called up right here. <clears throat> so let's run the anal these analyses just to take a quick look. So I'm actually just going to copy this and paste it in and run it as a batch. And so now you'll notice, first off, our first regression model, we have our mastery goal serving as a predictor of our dependent variable uh, their subject matter interest right there. And so this is the regression coefficient, standard error, t-value, and p-value. So uh, when we're running our um, mediation analysis, we basically have our x variable or IV serving as uh, a predictor of the mediating variable. And then the mediating variable is serving as a predictor of our DV. And then we can also have a direct effect from x, our independent variable, to our dv. So uh, in this uh, three variable system, we have basically a path A, a path B, and then you could call this path C or perhaps uh, C prime. So in this particular analysis, we've estimated essentially the coefficient for path A. So now uh, let's take a look at uh, our, our next set of uh, fit statistics. So in this case, uh, let me just kind of erase this a little bit. In this case, we have subject matter interest as a predictor of, of uh, the dependent variable. So this right here, this is path B, and then this is basically path C right here. So, and the indirect effect of, of the IV or X on the DV, Y, um, is essentially calculated as a product of paths A and B. 
So that's the indirect effect, and that's what we want to test um, using our mediation test uh, with the MBESS package. So let's go ahead and do that. So what we're going to do now, we have two options really uh, that we can use. You'll notice that first off, when we when we've uh, we since we use the library function to call up the package, now we can use the mediation function associated with that package. So you'll notice I have mediation, and inside the parenthesis, I've got in this case, I've got uh, mediate.data, that's our data frame uh, with our dollar sign and M goal. So that's the IV within uh, the data frame. And so that's the actual, this is the actual name of our independent variable. Then we've got um, our mediator specified. So we have again our data frame, dollar sign, and then the name of our mediator variable. And then mediate.data, our data frame, uh, dollar sign, and then our DV right here. You'll see that I have bootstrap is equal to true, comma, and then in this case I'm asking, uh, it says which dot boot, and I have equal both, and uh, both is in uh, quotation marks. So that's basically going to give me both uh, percentile bootstrap uh, confidence intervals as well as um, bias corrected confidence intervals. Uh, the B right here, this is the number of bootstrap samples that we're taking. In this case, it's uh, 1,000. And then uh, confidence level is set to 0.95. So if I highlight this, and uh, we'll just go ahead and copy it and paste it into our um, R and hit Enter, you can see that now the bootstrapping is taking place. And um, takes a, a, a couple of seconds, but there we go. So now you can see that we have um, you know various uh, pieces of output right here. First off, notice that we have the indirect effect, which is 0.3866, and this is calculated as a product of uh, path A and B, which uh, which I uh, showed you earlier. So yeah, so there you go. Uh, then you can see that we have the confidence interval. Uh, uh, lower uh, bound uh, for the using the percentile method and then uh, here's the confidence interval for the upper bound right here then we have confidence interval lower uh, bias corrected and then uh, also if we kind of scroll down uh, we also have the confidence interval uh, uh, upper bound right here for the bias corrected um, uh, estimate so uh, notice too that uh, there are various indices associated with um, or to evaluate the indirect effect. Uh, one of the things that you might be interested in, we have the ratio of the indirect to total effect. Uh, in this case, it's 0.37 ratio of indirect to direct effect, which is 0.59. And then, like I said, there are various other indices as well. Uh, I'm not going to go through every one of them because there's quite a bit of them, but there's a little bit more. There's more information in the documentation uh, on what these uh, various indices uh, uh, mean. Uh, now, the next option is if we don't want to uh, actually keep typing in the name of our data frame uh, followed by a dollar sign then followed by the name of our independent variable mediator or uh, dependent variable what we can do is we can say uh, x equals uh, and then the name of the data frame and then inside our um, um, uh, our uh, brackets we have comma and then in this case we have comma five and the five is basically uh, the fifth column within the data frame. So that actually corresponds to our um, our mastery goal uh, variable within the data frame. Then right here we've got the name of the data frame right here, but we're using mediator here. So mediator equals and then the name of the data frame and then you can see inside the brackets comma four. So that's uh, essentially the fourth column within that data frame and then over here for our DV, it just says DV, there's our data frame name again brackets and comma seven which is the um, uh, basically the variable in, um, uh, occupying the the seventh uh, column within the data frame and so that happens to be our achieve variable so everything else is set exactly the same we want to copy this and paste it in um, we can certainly do that and uh, hit enter and so it just takes a, a little bit of time for the bootstrapping to take place and uh, there you go so now we have um, our, our, our bootstrap results. Um, also keep in mind that in terms of 
testing the indirect effect for statistical significance, remember that this is our point estimate right here. The null hypothesis, whether we're using the percentile bootstrap approach or the uh, bias corrected uh, uh, confidence intervals, um, that basically the null hypothesis for the indirect effect is that it is zero. So uh, whichever approach that you uh, choose to utilize, basically the idea is that if the null of zero falls between the lower and the upper uh, bound uh, for, for the uh, confidence interval, then um, I mean, if it falls within that uh, that interval, then basically what that would translate into is that you would maintain the null hypothesis and infer that the indirect effect um, is not significantly different from zero. Um, if zero falls outside of the lower and the upper bound, then you would infer that the population indirect effect is different from zero. So that's basically uh, how you would interpret um, or how you would actually carry out a significance test um, under the null hypothesis that the population indirect effect is zero. So that concludes this demonstration.